right. So again, I want to welcome everyone to our second employer showcase um, sponsored by Student Athlete Development. Uh, so on behalf of Student Athlete Development, um, Ms. Jessica Hazard and myself, my name is Terrence Hood and I serve as Associate Director for Student Athletes and Alumni in our main TCU Career Center. Um, but I work with Jessica Hazard very closely with career coaching and programs just for student athletes. So whether you're a current student athlete, whether you're a student that's not an athlete, whether you're an alumni, thank you so much for being with us this evening. Um, I hope that this showcase is informative, engaging, um, gives you the tools you need to go from player to professional if I'm talking to our student athletes, but we wanna make sure that this is um, an engaging time. Um, we've done this, this is our second event um, all on Zoom. So hopefully we'll be back in person in the fall but we wanna make sure that we bring industry experts, former athletes, alumni, industry contacts from various industries. So today our first panel is sports, sales, communication, and civil service. So what I'd like to do is have our panelists just go down the line to just say hello, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then um, tell us about your background, um, your role at your current company. If you're an alum, if you're an athlete to share anything about yourself for our guest our student athletes that are joining us. So um, Chandler, would you mind just kicking us off and then we'll go down to George and then Javen and then with, um, with Anita. Yeah, of course. Thank you for the intro, Terrence. Um, my name is Chandler Jordan. I graduated from TCU in 2017. Um, I was on the cheerleading team for all four years and I was recruited out of college by Ian J. Gallo Winery, my current employer, um, into a sales position. And I am now currently the market development manager for on-premise for e j Gala Winery in North Texas. So a little bit about me and I will pass the torch, but looking forward to getting to know everybody tonight. Uh, once again, I just appreciate y'all having me on here. My name is George Baltimore. I graduated from TCU in 2017. I'm from Mansfield, Texas. I graduated with a communication degree. Um, Towards my senior year, I was looking to intern places in sales, marketing. Uh, my first six months out, I had a marketing job. For me, I couldn't do the nine to five. I didn't like going in person, sitting in cubicles. Uh, that just wasn't my area of expertise. Uh, so I decided to take a chance of going to the civil service. I'm a first responder, I'm a Dallas firefighter, EMT. I just serve the community of Dallas and that's about it. I work 10 days a month and it's just a little bit about me. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Javen Drummond. Um, I'm originally from a small town, Fort Pierce, Florida. Uh, I graduated undergrad from Florida a &M University in Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, I have a master's in uh, sports administration from Gramlin State University as well. Uh, moved here about six or seven years ago, been working with the Dallas Mavericks um, in the sales and marketing side of things. Um, intern with various uh, teams. Um, in both basketball and football and both on the sales and marketing side. So uh, just happy to be a part of this panel and, you know, hopefully impact you all in some way. Hi, everyone. My name is Anita Johnson. I did my undergraduate at Louisiana State University and I went to TCU for grad school, finishing with the Schieffer School of Journalism. So that's where I, I got my master's in ad PR and media research. I've been working for NBC Universal for the last 11 years, and it blows my mind that it's been 11 years because it doesn't feel like I've been here that long. I've moved around with the company. I started in Texas, actually in Fort Worth at KXAS. Knew Deborah Ferguson very well. She's a proud TCU alum. Um, moved to Chicago for a few years with NBC, and I recently, and well, actually it's not recent anymore. I've been in Los Angeles for three years, and I now work in research for our global distribution group, which essentially we are responsible for licensing all of our internally produced content outside the US. Actually now US, Canada, everywhere, because we handle everything globally. So I'm part of the team that helps position all of our shows to sell to our international clients. And I'm excited to be here too. All right, thank you all so much. And I want to also remind everyone that's here, this is your session, so please, chime in, unmute, use the chat. We're all pretty much used to Zoom by now. So I wanna make sure that I have my questions, but if you have questions for any individual panelists, 
please share. This is why we're here. All this time is dedicated to you. So if you have questions about someone's career path, about jobs, I'll be covering some questions about internships and the recruitment process, but please feel free to chime in at any time. So you're not interrupting, this is your session. So please feel free to take advantage of that opportunity. Oh, excuse me, sir. I have a question, sorry. Yes, sir. Um, so for kind of all the panelists, uh, like just for me personally, I know being a student athlete here, we don't have a lot of time for internships during the summer. And so a lot of the questions I've been asked about during my internship interviews with different companies is talking about experience. I was wondering, like from your perspective, how would you go about answering questions in regards to experience when we, me personally, I don't have much because I'm always focusing on sport during the summer. I, I'm happy to answer that. And one, congratulations, because I, I can't imagine being a student athlete and having to balance what you do with also figuring out, well, once I finish school, I need to find a job. I need to start in a career. And all I can say is use that experience to your advantage. Talk about the, your training regimen and, and how you have to schedule those things and you have to be dedicated to it. Because essentially the internship just shows them that you had time, you dedicated yourself to something, you've successfully completed it. That's what your, your involvement in sports is. You are completely dedicated to that. You can outline everything that you do when you're working on your training schedules or with your coaches and your teammates. Those are all very transferable skills to whatever you're looking to do. And I, I say that just remembering what it was like when I was, and I was not a student athlete, but just graduating. Well, how do I, how do you want 10 years of experience? I'm just trying to get experience. That's why I'm trying to get this great entry level job. I just took what I did in school and mentioned those skills that were transferable to whatever role I was applying to. And I, I think just the fact that you are all student athletes and you essentially have two jobs right now, in addition to being a student, you're commitment to your sport is a job in and of itself. So I would speak to that, speak to all of the, the tasks and everything that you do and the planning that goes into you being a student athlete and use that to your advantage. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that she pretty much nailed it. But the only thing I would add is come up with experiences and skill sets that you've learned from being a student athlete that maybe the next person they interview might not have had the opportunity to develop time management, leadership, teamwork, commitment, drive, um, and kind of tell how those things will make you a better employee or the right fit for that job. Um, really pull out kind of what's in the job description and um, think through those characteristics and how you've developed those through being a student athlete. Because if anything, we know that a lot of times student athletes are often even more qualified than just your average candidate because of the drive and the commitment um, and the work ethic that all of you have. And so um, I think that there's definitely a way to kind of take that question um, from an interviewee. I mean, they're just going over the resume. They kind of have to ask it and spin it positive and really kind of knock them, knock their socks off with, you know, well, I have this leadership um, that I've developed, you know, through this role as a student athlete. And here's a time where it really helped me set myself apart um, from the rest. And I think that there's definitely a way to frame your student athlete um, experience as a really, really positive and something that would be um, they would be lucky to have an employee and not shy away from, from that question um, just because you may not have the textbook experience, but you've also not had the textbook college experience. You've um, done a lot more in your time, so. Um, I have a side note to that too. Um, basically, I know in the sales, um, the sales realm, I've had managers that target student athletes um, because sales is a very competitive industry. So, you know, I've had some that kind of target them because of the competitive drive and the competitive nature. So there are some, uh, I know in the sales, the sales industry, there are managers that do target, especially sports sales um, because of that competitive drive and different things like that too. So 
you can use it to your advantage in many ways. And uh, they pretty much hit on all points I can think of, but I also think it's important uh, not to find your purpose in the job you're going after, but just the lifestyle you want to live. So uh, for me, if I was going to look for another job, I would make sure wherever I was going to applying or express an interest, they know who they're, you know, potentially going to have. So I think that's important just to, you know, figure out the atmosphere. Whenever they're interviewing you or just getting a feel for you, they should already know, you know, based on your resume, uh, the past four years or how many years you've been playing sports. That's, you know, more than any other regular college students ever done. I don't, I don't care if they have internships or whatnot, but the camaraderie you built over the last four years, the, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, waking up at 4 a.m., you know, having classes in the morning, you know, depending on your practice schedule, you know, all that goes into effect. So they should know who they're getting. I, I, I'd say, you know, see where you're applying and understand that, you know, you're looking for the lifestyle you're going to live for the next 30, 40 years rather than who you're going to be working for and how your life is going to change because of what they want you to be. Harrison, thank you for that question. And um, just to add to that, I think it's really important to think about your transferable skills and they've already mentioned, drive, your teamwork skills, communication skills. Um, it's important to demonstrate those skills on your resume, your cover letter, LinkedIn profiles. And so we in the Career Center can help with that for Harrison, any of our student athletes, but I love how they mentioned the transferable skills, that how you demonstrate the skill is more important than putting the skill. So having evidence behind the skills are what employees are looking for. So thank you so much, Harrison, for that question. And once again, if you have any concerns or questions, please use the chat or unmute. But I want to go to something different. I want to really hear a little bit about more about the path of our panelists. Um, uh, what inspired you to choose? For example, you know, George mentioned kind of the civil service side of things um, or your introduction, how you chose your industry. Um, Chandler, what inspired you to choose ENJ or choose sales, Anita, the research side of things. So if you can just talk about your path, I know that career paths are really linear. You know, ebbs and flows, some are undecided, some have a clear path, but would you mind telling us a little bit about your path and how you got started at your company or your industry? Yeah. George, we can start with you if you don't mind. Uh, so like I said, I, I think I forgot to mention, I played football at TCU. I was there from 13 to 17. I uh, got medically uh, DQ because of some injuries, but I was just like everyone else trying to intern everywhere, applying everywhere. Just, I don't know, nothing really fit me and I don't think I would have been a good fit for them. Um, I worked six months at a marketing company, but I was just looking for something that was work, but I never felt like I was going to work. The last time I wanted to work was, you know, when I was in college. I haven't felt like I've worked a day since. Uh, I just went ahead and applied to the fire department. You know, they only work 10 days a month. The pay is awesome. Um, it was a six month hiring process, but in the fire department, you submit your resume, you submit, you know, your transcripts and all that, but they try to get a feel for who they're, um, you know, who they're gonna potentially have for the next 30 years. They're not just looking at what's on paper, okay, cool, you had this GPA, oh, you, you interned here, you've made this much money, you know, you've worked for this organization or this company. They're more worried about what character this person has, um, you know, what can they do for us? This is the face of our Dallas Fire Department. How are they going to be in the community? You know, just, I have a, you know, I've been, I'm from a single parent home with five siblings. I just, I have a big background that I can put out there. So my Background's a little bit different the way I applied and I didn't have experience anywhere, but I knew what I wanted in a job and that was to work 10 days a month and just relax. You know, I feel like a stay at home dad. I have two kids and I enjoy my time. Um, so it's more in the medical field side of things we do. We do a lot of medical. We don't see much fire stuff these days, but, you know, I just seen so much in my life in the past three years and I applied as soon as I got out of college. And I've enjoyed every bit of it since then. I can go. Well, to I'll I'll tell all of you this. I had one internship during college, and I'm dating myself because my entire job was pretending to be a band on MySpace and 
getting other people, other fans of different bands to sign up to their page and listen to their music. So needless to say, that wasn't a big selling point when I was trying to get my first media job. But I actually, while I was a grad student at TCU, I found my first media job through the TCU job board. And it was for a small media rep firm. I just wanted to get my foot in the door. And I, I just had to sell my, my educational background and my interest. And the first interview I went to, I didn't get it. I, I didn't get it at all. But that same company had another assistant opening literally down the hall. And I ended up getting that one. And that put me on a path that I did not expect that I'd end up in LA where I'm at now. But initially I was interested in doing research. I, I just always found it fascinating. What compels people to watch the things that they do? Why do they watch what they watch? How, how are you targeted? And I mean, if any of you have Netflix, which I'm sure almost nearly all of you do, there is an entire team behind that algorithm that serves up everything that is presented to you and what you would like. So I, I got my first job and I knew I always wanted to work for NBC. I, I'd always been fond of their brands. And actually it was just one show that I really loved, Psych. Um, and I realized, oh, it was on USA Network and USA Network is owned by NBC Universal. I need to figure out how to get there. And I just looked and found at least some job that I was had some experience in and I just got into the company as a sales assistant. And during my interview, and I think this is important, especially when you're just starting out, let them know what your goals are. Let them know what your plans are. My, my very first interview, I let the hiring manager know, I want to get into research. That is what I would like to do. And luckily, I, was, I got hired. And within the first two weeks, I started working with the research manager at KXAS, who is still a very good colleague to this day that I still call call at times, but that just kind of led me into a path of sometimes it's a, a little bit of dumb luck and being in the right place at the right time that led to my first official research role. And then a colleague of mine went to our Chicago office and I was just going visit one random weekend, reached out to him and he said, oh, someone's leaving. I told my GM, you're in town if you want to interview while you're here. I ended up in Chicago four weeks later. So it, it just kind of snowballed and I, I didn't plan any of this. It just happened. And I, you just, you be, you be who you are. And I just made these normal personal, interpersonal relationships with people that ended up leading to more opportunities for me. And then ultimately I ended up here and I've met even more people. So I, I, I know it's, it's a little scary when you don't have the internship, but you sell what you do have. You sell who you are because ultimately they just want to know who you are. And if you're a good fit for their company and what their goals are too. Um, so basically, I got into my industry. Um, basically, I've always been a big sports person. I've always liked football, basketball, baseball, different things like that. So I always played them, but I knew that I wasn't going to play it on the next level. But I always wanted to get my hands, you know, into the sports industry some way. Um, so basically, I just I remember I was in grad school and uh, one of my professors, you know, he basically just threw me a book of different teams and addresses and just told me to send my resume. And I knew that that probably wasn't the best way to go about it. So I had to uh, basically kind of just get online and just apply myself. Um, I went to Teamwork Online, which is actually the website that teams post their uh, job postings um, to this day. So basically I went there and I just sent multiple resumes out, applied to multiple internships, and luckily, the Kansas City Chiefs, they called me and, you know, we did the interview process and different things like that. I got an internship and, um, you know, once the internship was over, I graduated from grad school and went back home and I'm back at square one again, trying to find a job, trying to find a job and scrambling, trying to get everything put together. And um, so I just went to LinkedIn. That's why I created a LinkedIn profile. So I was like, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search find everybody with all these different sports teams and just send them messages. And I just send out multiple messages and personalize them to multiple people. And uh, somebody from the Memphis Grizzlies, and one of my best friends to this day, um, Mike Brown, he reached out to me 
And um, it took him about three or four months to reach back out, but he reached out and said, hey, are you available to jump on the call later this afternoon on Skype? And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing anything, you know? So, uh, you know, that's how I got into the industry. And um, basically to piggyback off what Anita said, you know, is networking. You know, I just was kind of in the right place at the right time. Uh, you build your network, you build your trust with people in the industry, uh, because I call it a big fraternity and sorority, you know, it's, Everybody knows everybody, you know, it's a lot of people get promotions, they move around and, you know, you just build your network like that. But when you build that trust, you know, people don't mind co-signing for you and helping you and referring you for different things. So uh, I guess, you know, the timing was right. I got a little lucky, but it was a lot of determination behind it as well. Uh, you know, so I got a lot of doors closed in my face, but I just kept going because I knew to graduate. I needed an internship. So I just kept pushing and, you know, it all just lined up. Javen, thank you for sharing that. And um, for all of our panelists, and you talk about the power of relationships and networking. Um, last time I checked, I think it says um, a stat, over 80% of jobs are found through networking and the relationships. And I read a book that said, people are bridges to what you want. And networking is a relationship mindset. So it's not always about getting a job. It's about reciprocity. How can I help you? And hopefully in return, you might be able to help me. So um, that, that's really consistent messaging. But we communicate to the Career Center, Javen, Anita Chandler, and um, George. I want to talk a little bit about um, social media. Um, I've been doing this 20 something years. We didn't always have social media. <laughs> you could just send a resume and check that list off and now I'm done. I'll wait to hear back. Now it's not quite that way. Um, people say, Chance, I've applied, haven't heard anything. I've applied, I reached out, haven't heard anything. And my next question typically is, no, what's your LinkedIn presence like? Um, I saw a stat, a stat that says 96% of companies use LinkedIn at some point in the hiring process. And my question is, how important is your brand online? Um, should student athletes be Googling themselves does it matter what you post, what you tweet, what you tag? Um, how important is that in your company, your industry? And what advice did you give to student athletes just to make sure that their brand is on point? Did that make sense? Yeah, I would say that your online presence is extremely important, important, not just that you have one, but also in how you present yourself. Um, you know, your, your LinkedIn account is a business account. Um, so you want to look professional, you want to have it updated with your resume, your skill set, anything that you would want the employer to know that you think would make you stand out. Um, and then in terms of your, your personal social media, I mean, that's how we think of it. It's, it's our personal social media, but you choosing to put something out there means that, you know, it's free game um, for employers to look at. You know, companies do have ways around um, privacy screenings and, and stuff like that. So just always have the mentality that, you know, if you're willing to put it out there, you would be comfortable with your boss or your boss's boss or, you know, the person you're about to interview with for your dream job, um, seeing it. Um, so that's a good mentality to have. And, um, you know, I've been a hiring manager before, and I typically do look up somebody before I'm interviewing them, not because I, I'm trying to catch anybody in a trap or catch anything that they may not want me to find. You just want to know, you know, who you're about to interact with, um, you know, any get to know them, put a face to the name, um, before you go into the interview, it can be stressful for the person interviewing, um, as well. So my advice would definitely be stay engaged on LinkedIn, check your messages. I know sometimes when you're in the middle of your day and you see a LinkedIn message or something like that, you're like, oh, I don't have time for that right now, but set some time aside to go through and um, see the companies that are reaching out to you or the people that are trying to connect with you and, um, you know, actually go to their profile and see maybe how their um, career path is. And if anything about that interests you, um, I will say too, something that's really helpful and something that we have that's really unique is um, being a TCU alum that's special um, or being, you know, involved, being a Horn Frog family. Um, so when you're interviewing with a company, go see what alumni they have that have um, graduated from the university. Chances are y'all will have a, someone um, like in common. Um, you, if there's anybody you know, you can reach out and just say, hey, just a heads up. I'm interviewing for this company. I see that you work there. 
Um, I just wanted to let you know that could go a long way. They could immediately reach out to the recruiter or the person interviewing you and say, hey, I know so-and-so. They reached out and let me know that they're interviewing. I think they're an awesome candidate. And immediately you're set aside and have a leg up on everyone else. And so don't underestimate the power of networking and how you present yourself, but also um, taking the time to go the extra mile and um, you know pursue your connections um, is sometimes very, very rewarding. And just to add to that, Chandler really touched on a lot of important points. Just remembering that your social presence is an extension of you. And whenever people are hiring you, they are hiring all of you. And, and I'm sure you're all very well versed and way well versed than I am on every TikTok, Instagram, whatever there is, but that your presence does extend across all of these platforms and they and, and it, it is part of just the, the evaluation process because they want to see whenever someone is hiring you, they're hiring all of you because you're bringing all of yourself to whatever job that is. And one of the great things about LinkedIn, and I've actually had TCU students reach out to me via LinkedIn, but before all the shutdown, I've, I've met up with former students for coffee who are, had just moved to LA and trying to figure things out. And I'll, I don't mind talking to you. I, one, I think I'm impressed if someone just says, hey, I, I see you're a fellow alum. I'm trying to break into the industry. Can we just chat? People are usually happy to do that. And one of the things I, I, I always tell just even like our interns and like our, um, our jun the, my junior colleagues, there is nothing people love talking about more than themselves. So reach out to them, tell them, you know, we're, we're fellow alum. I, I'm interested in the career path that you follow. Do you have some time to chat? Do you, do you, can you, do you have any time in the next few weeks? And the great thing about a lot of us are still in this sort of flexible environment where we may not still be going into the office, but most of the time people will make time for you. So it's just reaching out to them and check your LinkedIn as much as you check everything else. Add the app, do everything else. If, some, if you don't have time to reply to it, as Chandler said, make time to reply to those messages. Look up these companies, follow every trade magazine possible or trade publications possible, depending on what your interests are but it's, it's a great tool to use. It really is. Uh, the ladies mostly covered all the points, uh, but social media presence, you know, just to piggyback is very important. Um, I've seen, you know, applicants, you know, basically come, some of the things they put on social media can uh, backfire on them. I've seen it happen multiple times. Uh, so it's just an extended version of your resume. Um, these companies have to protect their brand and different things like that. So, you know, they want people that represent them well, even when they're off the clock. So, um, you know, that's very important. So uh, just be very cautious and, you know, just think about, you know, different things before you post them and different things like that. Uh, they pretty much hit every point, but like, like they said, uh, perception is reality. So, you know, whatever you put out there, just know people just take it and run with it. Um, just make sure you're putting yourself out there and making it sure it's the best version of you. Just that's the advice I would give. I'm not huge on LinkedIn, but I did get on for the first time in a year and I had over 20 messages just based on my uh, experience and being a TCU alum. People just messaging you say, hey, you know, I, I'm a TCU as well. We're hiring, you know, if you're ever looking for another job you know, email me, send me a resume, that type of stuff. So LinkedIn is very important. I'm not looking right now, but uh, I'd say just put your best self out there. All right, everyone, thank you so much for sharing. And I'll just have really two more questions for the panel. And again, opening up to our athletes that are joining us, anyone that has a question, please chime in. But I just want to talk a little bit about um, the recruiting process um, if you're able to kind of share based on your knowledge of um, Dallas Fire or ENJ, NBC Universal, Mavs, um, if someone wants to apply for a job there or an internship or a career opportunity, um, what are the steps? You know, resume submission, um, do you look at cover letters? I'm kind of combining my questions now. How important are cover letters in your process? 
or just how important is knowing someone is the referral process something people should keep in mind. So any tips on the recruiting process for your individual companies as much as you're able to share? Um, basically ours is mostly all online based. Um, like I said, teamwork online is the main website. Um, I believe you go to our, our main website, maps.com and you go to the FAQs, I believe it's a career opportunities page as well there, but I'm pretty sure that it's pretty much the same as the same jobs as on teamwork online. Uh, but that's usually how we do it. Uh, cover letters in our industry is super important because we just have so many applicants. That's just an easy way for them to kind of weed you out. Um, so they definitely do look at that for sure in our industry. Um, but yeah, most of ours now the power of the referral is always going to trump all. Now, you know, that that's that still works, you know, but that's number one. But if you don't have that referral or reference, you know, somebody that's already in the industry, uh, just applying online and making sure that you put together a personalized cover letter would definitely give you an edge over a lot of other people. And just to piggyback on that, and I, I, I tell everyone what I wish I had known, that NBCU has a PAGE program that is incredible. It is a two-year rotational program based in either New York or LA. Check out NBCUniCareers.com. I know there's an NBCU interns Instagram page that they, they post frequently on that. Um, but I my entry into the company, I applied online. And I heard back about a month later. So it, it is possible. I didn't know a single person. I did not have a referral. So it, it is possible to get through that, that clutter and, and be noticed. Um, but definitely check out the, um, all of, there, there are so many talent development programs. I, I'm not sure if any of you have interest in like writing or directing there. I know they just wrapped the Universal Writers Program submission, but follow, I'm sure there's probably on like the media site or sort of like the company landing page for NBC Uni Careers where you can look at all of the social handles that they have because they post about all of the sort of a, like associate training type programs. So there's a lot of those available. In terms of cover letters, I, I'm not really involved in the hiring process, but if they ask for a cover letter, cover letter, always send a cover letter. I will tell you that if they ask for it, send it. And if they ask for samples, that if it's pertinent to whatever you're applying to, have just a, a solid page that you can direct them to or just a way to upload some samples of any materials if it's applicable to the role that you're applying for. But mostly just, you just start applying. And if you can find a way to connect with someone, that's always even better. And that's what LinkedIn is great for, where you can, I used to look up the people whose jobs that I wanted. And the great thing about LinkedIn, they will tell you exactly what their career path was. And you can reach out to them and just ask, hey, I, 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 I'm just interested in getting into this. And I did that when I started at the company. I was following one of the SVPs of research on Twitter. And while I was still in Texas, I just emailed him. I said, hey, I follow you on Twitter. I love your insights. And we talked for like 30 minutes and he said, just get an analyst job. And, and I did that. So I just, I, I even started networking within the company and that helped too. So just do what they ask you to do in terms of applications and network with people on LinkedIn. As, as daunting as networking may seem, it is super helpful. Just be yourself. It's just talking to people. That's all networking is. Like we're just talking to people exactly what we're doing right now. So. I love that. What a testament to um, LinkedIn. I, I will say that's a great way to get to know anybody that whose career path you're interested in. Um, just to, to bring it full circle, I remember when I was interviewing with Ian J. Gallo Winery on TCU's campus, um, I guess four years ago, um, almost to be exact. And I remember the person who was interviewing me was telling me about their job and about the company. And I was like, I want to, I want to have that role one day. And four years later, that's the exact role that I have. Um, so, you know, learning about people's career path and just knowing like the sky's the limit here are kind of the steps that my career path could take um, are really, really awesome. And then specifically um, for you guys, Ian J. Gallo Winery does recruit um, heavily out of TCU. So we should be on all of the career sites. We're on Handshake. 
Um, I'll be speaking at the career fair tomorrow. Um, I know several of my counterparts um, are speaking as well. So there will be quite a few meetings if you kind of want to hear the whole spiel and get to know about the alcohol industry a bit. Um, but um, specifically, we have an internship opportunity as well as a full-time position through our sales leadership development program. Um, it is a career path. It is not just your first role. Um, so the sales leadership development program carries you through um, the first three steps of your career and then sets you up for success from there. So if you have any interest in um, you know, the winery or the food and beverage industry, um, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Um, send me over your resume. Um, we do a lot of recruiting out of TCU. They are great, great partners for us. Um, and I would love to, to do anything I can to, whether it's just grab a coffee call or something with you so that you can ask me more um, or accelerate your resume to the rest of our recruiting team so that we can get something more formal set up. Um, would love to help you guys out. So it's a little bit about the winery process. For the firefighting process, it's all online. Um, they don't really ask for a resume just because there's so many different people from different walks of life to come apply. We have I mean, lawyers, doctors, I mean, people of every sport, you know, men and women who range from 20, or 20 years old to 35 years old when it comes to applying. Um, the recruiting process is, like I said, a six month process. The first thing first, you put you apply online. We hire about 200 people a year. Then you get in a written exam where it's just a baseline, simple math, reading, writing, a um, little bit of knowing some tools. After that, it's a, it's a physical test. You got to pass a physically a stressful test. But for athletes, especially TCU athletes, it's a walk in the park. Um, after that, it's a background drug polygraph test. So they're trying to find the best people out there, uh, people with the best character, people who have obviously not you know, been running through jails and anything like that. Um, you know, there's a hit follicle test, you know, urine test. And then at the very end, it's just a panel of you and, you know, some chiefs, captains, lieutenants. And they're just asking you questions about, honestly, just life. Uh, trying to gauge what type of character you have. Um, just trying to find the best people. Like I said, just people who apply who are 35 years old, who've been out of college for 17 years, who've made millions. You know, people who play pro sports and you know, they just try to sit there and dissect everyone. We just hired, we had 5,000 people apply and they're going to hire 200 this year. So from 5,000 to 200, they're going to pick, I mean, it's going to get pretty, you know, cream of the crop. They're going to figure out who they want. And, you know, we need a lot of women on this job. We don't have much. We have 2,800 firefighters and there may be, there may be 200 women just because it's a physically demanding job. But I mean, for the recruiting, it's just, it's fair game. Who can put the best foot forward? Who can come out on top? That's all it is. Yeah, did you, did you see my little Chevy? Tiana, will you mute your screen? Yep. <laughs> I got it, Link. Awesome. And George, thank you for sharing that. My last question, everyone, I wanted to just pick it back on George's comments about interviewing. You talked about some of the questions that are typically answered or typically asked. And I want to just ask Chandler, Anita, and Javen, if you can just share briefly um, what interview tips you would share as much as your knowledge um, base in terms of what types of questions to expect. Uh, we talk about the importance of research in the company, but what are the tips? Um, I know all interviews are typically virtual. Some are doing phone interviews. So do you think that will continue as the pandemic goes away or any other trends you see in terms of interviewing and what other advice you would share for our student athletes that are attending today? I'll say that remember that interviews are conversations. So yes, they're asking you questions, but you're also interviewing them. So that, that to Terrence's point, making sure that you research the company and as since most of you are, are early on in your careers, there, there are gonna be probably a lot of, I'd say stock questions of where do you see yourself in five years? Which I, I still think that's a really tricky question. Like, I don't even know where I see myself in five years. I don't know what I wanna do, be doing five weeks from now. Will I be in the office? Will I be working in a living room? I don't know. But just having just sort of stories ready to go. 
and kind of, and I'm sure that the Career Center can help you all with just some preparation questions, but you, you want to have, I'd say, at least three to five stories or examples that you can share with a potential employer. And for you all being student athletes, you can talk about just your time with your teams and when maybe you had to come together to figure out the right strategy for whatever sport that you're in. And that that just speaks to just your critical thinking skills and how you work with other people and how you're able to suss these things out to figure out the best path for you all to succeed together. And that can easily be applied in the workplace. I, I, I mean, I work on in group projects where nothing changes from college. There's always the one person who does all the work and then the four people you have to chase down to get things done. That will prepare you for being in the workplace when you have to work with five other people to complete one thing and then get it approved by 17 other people. So it, there, there are a lot of similarities in what you're doing now and what you'll be doing in the workplace. So just, just try to have some stories and examples ready to go in your interviews. I would say um, always go in prepared for the question, tell me about yourself. Um, that's the first thing a lot of people ask as soon as they Look at your resume and um, if you have an answer prepared and you can say, you know, well, I'm so and so and this is why I would be a great candidate. And here's the experiences that have, you know, shaped me into, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and you kind of have like an elevator pitch about yourself. You're going to start off the interview on such a positive, calm, cool, collected, confident um, note. And that's really, really important because, you know, the last thing um, the interviewer wants to do is sit there and read your whole resume and, you know, it's awkward for everybody. So I think just having something prepared um, to start off on a positive foot is, is really, really important. Um, prepare yourself questions that you think like, oh, I can obviously answer that. Like, what are your weaknesses? No, like really prepare um, for that question and think through it and have a story, um, you know, of a weakness, of a time you showed weakness and how you overcame it. Um, and all of that, like really prepare for kind of the, the standard questions because, um, you know, naturally conversations when it's flowing, um, it'll be easy and it, the energy will be good. Um, but it, nothing's worse than an awkward pause via Zoom. Um, if, you know, if we're still doing Zoom interviews, which I can foresee at least this semester. Um, so always, always having some questions. Um, always being prepared for some of the typical most asked questions. Um, make sure that you know, you're know you able to speak to everything on your resume um, and that everything on your resume is um, it, you know, important. There's no reason to have a five page resume. The Career Center can definitely help you with that. Clean, concise, um, and all of that type of stuff. Um, I would say definitely research the company. You know, there's nothing worse than, well, why do you want to work for Ian J. Gallo? And they're like, uh, you know, the alcohol industry sounds cool. Um, that's great. And it is, but there's so much more to every company than just what's in the name or, you know, um, your initial thoughts. So research the company, um, get to know kind of what they're involved in, what's important to them, what their values are. You can pretty much find all of that information on any um, corporate website. Um, and I'm sure you could reach out to any of us and we could point you in the right direction. And then I would say, lastly, have um, questions for the person interviewing you. Um, you want to get to know them as well. And you want to make sure that y'all are the right fit for each other. You're not just trying to, to take a job to take a job. Um, you know, we both want this to be mutually beneficial and something that's fulfilling for both parties. So really take the time to um, know your stuff, research the company. Um, prepare, be confident, um, have some examples in your tool toolkit that you can pull out when, when they're needed. Um, and then also, um, you know, make sure that this company and what you're getting yourself into is um, the right fit for you. Because there's nothing worse than getting through the entire process and, you know, all of a sudden, it, it's not the right fit for anybody. So really take the time to, to ask those questions up front. Um, you know, and that way the interviewer is respectful of your time and you're respectful of the company in general. All right, I think we got everyone on a question um, for the interview tips. Well, that pretty much um, 
is all the questions I have. Um, I wanted to open up to any of our student athletes or attendees to have questions. Please feel free to unmute at this time, but um, we do have another session at six. And so I wanted to give time for athletes to ask questions at this panel. Um, you, um, Jessica, do you have anything to add or any thoughts or any words to share? Um, I mean, not really. The panel did a great job. I really appreciate um, having alum on and having people with different experiences as well in a lot of the fields that we we want to work in. Um, just as you know, a reminder, student athlete development, that's what we're here for. So um, make sure you're reaching out. Terrence has been made himself super available and connecting. And if you want mentors, if you want any of those things, those things are all available. We just need to hear from you. Um, but I really appreciate everyone coming on. It's it's fun to see George. You know, he was one of my student athletes when when he was here, I was still here. Um, so it's fun to see people moving on and into new fields and being able to come back and share those experiences with the current student athletes. So let us know what we can do to help. All right, Jessica, thank you so much. So before we conclude, um, I want to open up to any of our student athletes, any questions for our panel? Any further questions? You're muted. I'm totally muted. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jason. Happens all the time, more than I would care to admit. But as I was saying before I was interrupted by myself, <laughs> if um, Anita Chandler and Javen and George, if student athletes have additional questions, um, if they wanted to follow up with you, which would be open to them reaching out to you on LinkedIn, or for you, what would be the best method for them to reach out to you for further questions or for further conversation? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I think we are all talking at once. Go ahead. Um, uh, LinkedIn or email is what would be best for me. Um, so feel free to contact me on LinkedIn. Uh, Javen Drummond, J A V as in Victor A N. Last name is Drummond. And um, actually, my email address is javen.drummond at dallasmavs.com. So, you know, I'd be very happy to speak to anyone. And same LinkedIn or email in here. I'll and actually some of your athletes DM me in the chat and ask for my email. So there, there it is. Um, I'm all I'm happy to answer any questions about media or or just NBCU. And I'm always on LinkedIn. So you can find yes. me on there too. LinkedIn or email. Um, LinkedIn is just Chandler Jordan. And then I put my email um, in the chat. And then um, I am speaking on behalf of the winery at the career fair tomorrow, specifically about the internship and the full-time position. Um, if you have any interest, I specifically am speaking at 1230, but I know that there are lots of sessions um, for the winery throughout the day. So um, would love to see you on that. You can register on Handshake um, and then feel free, LinkedIn, email. Um, I'm available to help y'all. I'm available through email. More personable, you can hit me on Instagram, Facebook. I'll send you guys my number. You can call me, we can meet up. It doesn't matter. I give you, you know, shut off my back. If you want to come work for the city of Dallas, find a way to contact me and we'll, we'll make it happen. All right, George, thank you so much. And Chandler, Javen, Anita, thank you all so much for being here. Um, that's all the questions I have. Um, thank you for sharing your contact information. And um, we have another panel at 6 p.m. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break, uh, take a little bit of a pause from Zoom and stretch, get some water, do what have you. So hopefully if you're athletes, if you're joining us for the 6 p.m. session, we'll get started momentarily. I just wanted to give a quick little mention um, of our career fair here that is happening tomorrow. Just wanted to share my screen here. This as a reminder, it'll be from noon to 6 p.m. Uh, we have about 90 something employers signed up for that internships, full-time jobs, graduate schools, part-time jobs, the whole gamut is gonna be available, a wide range of industries. NJ Gala will be one of our employers there. So please come and join us if you have time. There are group sessions available and one-on-one -on -one sessions with the employees directly. Sign up on Handshake. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here. And now we're going to press pause before our 6 p.m. session. And, um, and again, Anita, Chandler, Jacob, and um, George, so nice to see you all and meet some of you for the first time. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks so much. And go Frogs. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Frogs. Go Frogs. Thank you. Good luck.
Galax and Clement. And so I want to welcome everyone once again to our employee showcase. Uh, we had a great panel at five o'clock. Uh, this is our second panel, our final panel and discussion today with our wonderful um, panelists that are joining us. And so um, I'm Terrence Hood from the TCU Career Center, Associate Director for Athletes and Alumni. And I also work very closely with Ms. Jessica Hazard and Student Athlete Development for career coaching and programming. So this is one of our signature programs that we've done for the second time in lieu of our in-person networking night that we used to have, hopefully we will have in the future. Um, this is kind of our backup plan. It's been very, very successful. Uh, so welcome to everyone joining us. Thank you so much for being here. So to get started here, I really would like to dive right on in and ask all of our panelists here just to tell us a little bit about yourself, about your company, about your role, um, if you're an alum, if you're an athlete, um, just tell us just briefly, tell us kind of your story, if you don't mind. Richard, would you mind starting us off? Yeah, no problem. It looks like Logan's here with me in perfect timing. So guys, my name is Rich Westermeyer. I'm the regional director with AFLAC here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I've been with AFLAC for eight years. I started my career with AFLAC in St. Louis, Missouri, which is where I was born and raised. Uh, I am an alumni of the University of Missouri, as is Logan. I, however, did not play sports at U University of Missouri, and Logan did, so that's why I have him on here with me today to talk to you a little bit about transitioning, life after ball, as we like to call it, right, what happens next. So, um, you know, I know you guys are spinning a lot of plates playing sports and getting your degrees right now, and I just want to tell you that I'm proud of you guys. I think it's super impressive because uh, I know – from, from experience and uh, working with Logan, what student athletes go through. So uh, Logan, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a little introduction real quick. Yeah, good uh, good evening, everybody. Rich, give me a thumbs up, you hear me all right? Awesome. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Logan Cheadle. Uh, I am a district sales coordinator here in the Dallas area with AFLAC. Um, and as Rich mentioned, I began my career um, actually before I even graduated uh, throughout an internship with AFLAC uh, and during my time at Columbia as a student athlete. So um, I've been with AFLAC now for four years. Um, it's been an amazing process. And uh, what we do is go business to business and uh, help companies with employee benefits. And I'm sure uh, Rich will probably dig into that a little bit more, but I'm just excited to be on with you all today. Just make sure you guys understand and realize the uh, um, a lot of the uh, intangibles that you've learned as a student athlete that uh, Will allow you to be extremely marketable in the workplace and uh, want to be here as a resource to uh, anybody in any way that I can. So, Terrence, I'll shoot it back to you. And Douglas, would you mind telling us about yourself? Yes. So, my name is Douglas Beaumont. Um, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I went to the University of Louisville where I did play football there. Um, just like Richard said, once sports is over, it's kind of like, hey, what's next? Um, I ended up getting into sales, started out as a sales um, representative for Nabisco, but then um, had some former teammates contact me about talent acquisition, being involved there. So I got into recruiting, um, where now I've uh, started out with a staffing company, worked myself up. Um, I went to, I've actually moved to Austin, Texas, where I was at Google starting out, and then recently um, two years ago, transition over to Amazon, where I'm now a technical sourcing lead for them. Um, I focus on software engineers. So basically, um, if you guys have Amazon Prime or, hey, work with Alexa, um, different things like that, I help find the people that uh, build those things. So um, it's exciting. Um, like Logan said, I'm excited just to talk more about how to transition your skill sets as an athlete over to um, the career field and hopefully just can give some tips and tricks there. Charles, would you mind telling us about yourself as well? <clears throat> All right, good afternoon. My name is Charles Boyd. I currently work for Coles in the capacity of, I work at the E Fulfillment Center. I'm a senior operations manager. So basically we have like a 1.5 million square foot building. And when you order stuff, we're the people that get it to your door in less than two days. So a little bit about myself. I got my undergrad at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. That's an HBCU. And I got my master's at the University of Arkansas in operations management. I've been in supply chain 
over 15 years now. It's a very fascinating field. And what I'm here to do on this panel is to kind of introduce you to the world of supply chain. And also that transition from student into the workforce can be overwhelming and potentially scary. So I wanna help you guys navigate that as best I can with some of my facts, opinions, and experiences. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, well, thank you all so much for sharing. I don't think I missed anyone, but I wanted to make sure that our athletes that are on our call, like we did at five o'clock, this is your session. So please jump in anytime. At five o'clock, we had an athlete jump right on in with a question. <laughs> so you're not interrupting. This is really your session. I have a few questions for the panelists, but please use the chat, unmute, um, do a little bit of both, but please make sure that you get your questions answered. That's why we're here. We're all here for you. So what I'll do is if there are no initial questions, then please jump in any time. I want to talk a little bit. Um, I know that Charles talked about the supply chain. I want to talk a little bit about your career path. Um, in other words, what inspired you to choose like supply chain or um, talent acquisition or sales or AFLAC? I know what some athletes I talked to, they're unsure about their career path, or some are very definite, but just need kind of definite steps to get there. So since paths are not a very, they're very really linear, tell us about what inspired you to choose your industry or your company. Um, Charles, would you mind starting us off? Yes, sir, I'll start us off. So um, the way I got into the supply chain was kind of a almost dumb luck. So I was actually a marketing major and, and I went to a career fair one day and I met a guy and I started out with Walmart and he worked for Walmart and he liked me, he gave me an interview and we talked and then I learned that in supply chain, I could actually um, maximize my income. That, that was the field that was gonna pay me the most. Cause I mean, I was graduating and I needed the money and I was ready to start working. So got into it and thought I was only gonna be in it two years because I was naive. I didn't understand how big supply chain was because I really didn't know, you know I really never thought about how the stuff get to the store. Once I got in it, understanding how big supply chain is and how many avenues I can go down and then also just with the way it was growing, I kept getting raises. So it made made it tough to stay, the, to leave it and then kept getting promotions. So from there, I, and then I was able to travel the country. I've worked in eight different buildings. I've worked in five different states. So it constantly kept me um, reinventing myself, learning new things and, and supply chain with all the facets of it it'll push you because you can be whatever you want to be in supply chain. You could be an engineer, you could be a manager, you could be a data analyst. So there's so many things you can do from it. You could be an HR. So supply chain, it's bigger than, hey, the warehouse that the product comes from. So it's kept me in it. And now it'd be tough for me to leave because there's so much, so many other platforms I can go to that the sky's the limit for me now. Yeah, whoever wants to go next, Douglas, how about yourself? Or Richard? <laughs> go ahead. Me and Logan will wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, so for me, I mean, it was kind of one of those things, you know, I think I, I was a business major um, in college. I kind of had that, you know, I'm going to the league and then I'm going to start my own business using my degree, but uh, that didn't pan out. So for me, it was like, hey, what is an opportunity for myself to where, I could build relationships, you know, I, I didn't mind talking to people and I didn't, I had the work ethic. I feel like that's something that every student athlete has the work ethic. So for when getting into the sales was something that I saw that I was excited about. Um, from there, I, like I said, I had a former teammate that talked to me more about the recruiting side, but when you went to the staffing agency, there was always opportunity to make commission off um, recruiting. So I was like, and he was like, Doug, you know, based off your work ethic, what you have done, this is an easy way just to transition for you. You get to talk to people on a day-to-day -day basis. You can have those conversation. You have those people skills, um, which I also think student athletes have, um, are, you know, able to talk to other individuals. So then I got into the recruiting side and that's where, you know, for me, I start to see a lot of doors open. I mean, you can go in so many different routes. 
Um, you can be in HR or you can stay in recruiting and you can work for so many different companies. At the end of the day, a lot of times people think, oh, you know, if I just apply, I'm going to get the job. But you do have to go through recruiting sometimes. And people are actually every day we're looking at profiles and trying to talk to you to bring you to the table. So that's always been interesting for myself. And, you know, I would have never thought, you know, I know growing up, I watched the movie The Intern the internship and it was just hey the people that was at google it was like oh this is i mean i wouldn't work at a campus like that and then i had the opportunity to do so in recruiting so it's just it, it continues to open doors and now i'm working for one of the largest companies in the world with amazon um and it, and it just allows me to see things from a large scale perspective and then it allows me to see hey where else can i go within my career you know there's other opportunities from like program management to um diversity inclusion um titles and roles that I can pursue and just being able to impact people and watch people get their position because I helped them and guide them through the process. So recruiting is was a definitely exciting and I definitely think it allows me to use the skill sets that I've learned from the football field. I love it. That's an awesome story, Douglas. And uh, I think Douglas said something key in there. Uh, he said he saw that movie, The Internship, and he thought, man, it would be cool to work at a place like that. Well, I want to piggyback on that because I want to really let you guys know just how beneficial I think internships can be to your career selection process. Um, me personally, when I was at school, I was studying finance with a minor in real estate. I'd always had a desire to know uh, finance. I love numbers. I love money. I uh, wanted to learn everything about it. I really also thought it was sexy and cool, uh, if, if you want to say that. Um, you know, I had seen movies like uh, Wall Street and, and they glamorized this finance lifestyle. So for me, I always knew my end game was corporate finance or personal banking. Uh, at least that's what I thought until I decided to venture outside of my comfort zone and try an internship. I actually found myself interning for a sports marketing company. And what we did is we did the off the field marketing deals for NFL players. That was the majority of our focus. We had a few other athletes, but mainly NFL players. So we would do their appearances, their endorsement deals, uh, trading card deals, shoe deals, you name it. Um, and, and we would negotiate these contracts for them. And I got the chance to intern with that company uh, for the summer in between my sophomore and my senior year. And then if our, I'm sorry, my junior and my uh, senior year. And then following that final year of college, I went to work for that company full time. So I spent four years working for that company and uh, it had nothing to do with my major. Um, and that's why I think internships are great because they give you a chance to go out and sample different opportunities out there, something that you may not necessarily even think is in your wheelhouse. And then um, the other thing that I'll say is the sports marketing thing was phenomenal, but I ended up figuring out that I wanted something different and I was able to find the AFLAC opportunity through networking. So hopefully we'll have a chance to talk a little bit about the importance of those two things uh, to your career search, internships and networking. And uh, Logan, I'll throw it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, I. Uh was a little indifferent you all as an athlete. I, I played football at Mizzou and um, I was probably the only person in the locker room that didn't have NFL aspirations, which I don't think my coaches liked me being the starting corner and not wanting to continue to play football. However, uh, it prompted me to, to start looking at other opportunities early. And um, I was a health science major in college. I, I went to school hoping that I would be a dentist um, until I took my first biology class and quickly realized I was not cut out for it um, because that class was too hard. Um, so uh, ultimately, I, I decided I wanted to venture off and get into something um, in the medical uh, sales field. Um, I wanted to get into sales as a student athlete because I saw that as a way for me to continue to compete, right? And that was the reason I was so good at what I do, um, even in football. I mean, I'm 5'8 and 175 pounds, but I was the starting corner in an SEC team because I just like to compete, right? Um, so I saw sales as an opportunity to continue that drive, um, and I was excited about it. So ultimately, I I uh, wanted to do medical device sales. And I told him I need some experience. So uh, luckily I had an individual in Columbia, Missouri, uh, who was the regional sales coordinator, which is Rich's role, reach out to me. Um, and I, I took an internship with Affleck um, and I loved it um, so much so that I came back full time. And, and it's because in that internship with Affleck, I saw um, that number one, I was able to compete. Number two, um, I was paid what I earned, right? One of the things that ate me up about being a student athlete was that we didn't get paid for doing what we did. 
Um, and so the, the job I took in, in working with Aflac, I was living on commission, right? And so the work I put in, I saw come out in my bank account every, uh, every paycheck, which I appreciated more than anything. But I also saw um, a company that really cared uh, about people and the people are successful by investing in and mentoring other people and seeing them grow. I also saw within the leadership, not only on the corporate level, but also within Missouri, um, the diversity on display within within leadership in our company. Um, I saw people that were black, brown, blue, um, female, male, uh, young, old. Uh, and so I quickly realized it's a company that didn't care uh, about what I looked like or how old I was. They cared about results um, and the person that you are, right? So that's something that really, really got me excited. And it's moved me to a, a different state. And uh, it's been an awesome journey ever since then. So that's kind of how I got going and uh, what I love about uh, my company. All right. Thank you all so much for sharing. And to Richard's point about the relationships, I really want to hone, on that, hone in on that more. I know that Jessica and I really talk about the power of the relationships and the connections and the conversations. So if I can ask one question about for your company or your industry, um, tell me, talk about the recruiting process um, as, as best you can. In other words, though, the resume, and I've been doing career service for 25 years. We didn't always have social media. <laughs> All we needed was a resume. We checked the box. And I'll get a phone call. I'll get an interview. That process might not always apply based on the company. So long story short, if you were to share about your recruiting process and how important would a referral be, how important is networking relationships to get a foot in the door, a toe on the door, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, I guess, Douglas, would you mind starting us off? Yes. So, yeah, um, I, you know, being off the bat, I think, you know, with Amazon, it can be, depending on what field you're um, going into, it can be tough to get into um, Amazon. The interview process is fairly tough, but as you talked about, the networking piece is huge. We are very big on referrals um, because we look at it as, hey, if that person wants to stick their neck out for you, then you are bringing something to the table. So um, the referral piece is huge. The other thing is like the, you talk about the resume. Um, with the resume, I always just wanted to make sure that candidates had the experience, but also that it reflects what the job opportunity is looking for. I think sometimes you got to be real with yourself. Um, I think sometimes people want to apply for a director position, but have a year of experience. You can't like, like you got to be realistic, understand what your capabilities are. And if you do have the skill sets, hey, apply for that position. But if you do know somebody that's within the um, company, reach out to them and have them help you get, get your foot in the door. Um, from a social media standpoint, we don't necessarily look as much into social media, but we do look at LinkedIn a lot. I'm on LinkedIn all day, every day. So I am understanding, hey, what are you doing in LinkedIn? How involved are you um, when it comes to LinkedIn? Are you posting things? Are you showing like what companies you wanna um, work for? Different things like that will help yourself stick out. So when I come to your page, I'm seeing not only that you wanna be a part of the company that I potentially have, or at the same time, hey, you now you also have the skill sets and you talk about that um, within that. So that's what I, the advice that I have from um, that standpoint, you, using the referrals and networks that you have, making sure your resume is um, applied towards the job that you're going for, and then also making sure your LinkedIn is up to date and you are utilizing that um, when you are in the market. I'll piggyback on that. I think LinkedIn uh, is definitely a great resource for, for people in our position who are looking to add talent to their team. Um, it gives us a chance to not only see what past experience you have, but what other interests we may have in common. Uh, and it also gives us a chance to see what type of extracurricular activities you're doing. So I encourage you guys to really make sure your LinkedIn uh, profile is up to date. You can go on and if you don't have interest, you can uh, put interests onto your profile so people can find some commonalities with you and also put any extracurricular experience that you have, whether it's the captain of your team, um, you know, volunteer experience, uh, anything that you're proud of, share that on your profile, guys. I think that's huge. And then just speaking to Terrence's question, um, the value of a referral is invaluable. Uh, guys, referrals uh, start the majority of, of people's decisions processes. 
So if you can get a referral into an organization, you're going to be already held in a higher regard than somebody who just applies. And because you have that referral, the hiring manager is going to take more of a vested interest in you, in my humble opinion, just simply because they have an obligation to the person that they know that referred you to take care of you as an employee as well. So I think a couple of things to think about uh, while you're on the on the search out there. Yeah, and, and Rich, I'll, I'll kind of continue that. And uh, that's something that I understood uh, from an early uh, age because my father beat that into my head that uh, as your net worth will be about as big as your network is what he used to tell me, right? Um, so just putting that into practice, not even coming from a, a AFLAC standpoint, but as a student athlete, one thing that I would recommend that I found extremely valuable to me, guys, is um, starting that now. Um, you guys have so many people that are invested and want to see you all succeed. Um, that's why we're on this call right now, right? There's so many alumni I know specific to TCU that just want to see you all succeed. Um, and so I wouldn't hesitate to reach out. I used to reach out to my, uh, you know, uh, parents of my friends that I thought were really successful, um, friends and family members when I was at Missouri. Um, we used to do the, uh, uh, the donor calls to thank the donors for uh, donating to us. I got that list and called some of the people off that list and, and simply said something to the effect of, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, donor, uh, my name's Logan. I'm a student athlete at, at Missouri. First of all, I want to thank you for what you did for us and helping me be able to go to school here. Um, but I wanted to just pick your brain. I wanted to see if I could take you out to coffee, right? Pay, spend $2 on somebody for coffee or lunch and say, hey, I just wanted to pick your brain. I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, what I'm looking for in a career and see if you had any advice for me. So come from kind of a, a servant mindset and I'm just wanting to learn from somebody uh, and they'll make sure you get in the right doors a lot of times and put you in contact with a lot of the right people depending on what career uh, or what industry you're wanting to get into. So I wouldn't hesitate to reach out to people and just let them know what you're looking for uh, and see if they have any advice and, and help for you as well. Um, also, I'll jump in and say uh, these guys made some great points, but from a different perspective, uh, one thing you got to understand that recruiting is a process. And the, it, so you got to understand it could take weeks, it could take months. So and I'm about to say something very contradictory, but it's fast and it's slow at the same time. So what I mean by that is you could be getting a call every week, somebody calling you every day, and then all of a sudden it seems like they ghost you and you may only hear from them every two weeks or so. So you got to remember it's a process and you're not the only candidate that they're talking to. So they're trying to place the best person. And so when you do get that opportunity, kind of like in sports, or anything, you got to step up to the plate. So just make sure you're ready, make sure you're prepared and take those opportunities and don't take them lightly because the recruiter's job at the end of the day is to place the best talent for he or she's company. They don't owe it to you. So just keep that in mind as well. I do want to jump back in just really quickly. Logan brought up a great point just as far as the networking. Um, I did the calls too and getting the donors, everything like that. But one of the things is when you do look at LinkedIn, when you are starting to get into the uh, field, one of the neat things about LinkedIn is when you are looking at either companies or things like that, they do have a little section at the bottom where it says, hey, it might have the alumni of like the school that you are at. So if you see like a TCU alumni, I would be bold and reach out to them. A lot of times they are excited to hear from athletes from your school. I mean, from the school that they went to, I would just say, hey, like have a coffee chat or, hey, can I talk to you? I notice there's a position at your company. Do you feel like this is a great opportunity for me to uh, pursue? I would just do that. Have that boldness. We are athletes. We you know, are very competitive. And if it's something you want to go for, I, I feel like you just need to reach out. And usually alumni will get back to you. If I saw somebody from U of L that's like, hey, I'm looking to get my foot in the door, I would always take that time to at least communicate with them, let them know the qualifications, or hey, let me set you up with somebody who can help you out um, and get you in the door. All right, Douglas, thank you so much for sharing that. And in terms of referrals, I'll just briefly add, I've been doing more referrals in the last six months than I've done in my whole career <laughs> because people are saying, I don't know anybody at this company. Hey, the career center has career fairs. We have employers, we have alumni. And so I've been doing email introductions to people like Richard, who's been very responsive of employers from me that know me and that initiates like Adam McAdoo, who's a former athlete. I have his email, his cell phone. 
So take advantage of the network that you already have in TCU and Ms. Jessica and myself, because people want to help. But like Jessica would say, Jessica would say, let us know how we can help you. And so I'm happy to do those referrals and those emails, those connections on LinkedIn. So, so important to establish that relationship. Any questions? What questions do you have for our panelists? I want to kind of press pause a moment and um, hear from our athletes. What questions do you have for our panelists? All right, we might have some moving forward. Just wanted to do a little pause there. I only have literally two questions left before we wrap up here. I wanna talk a little bit about interview preparation. Um, so from your perspective, what are some tips you give to student athletes to market their skills effectively in an interview? What's your process like? I'm sure lots of it's virtual as pandemic has kind of um, demanded, but what overall tips would you have? We say research the company, that's a given in some cases, but for you, what would stand out to you um, for someone who interviews is it their confidence, is it their skills? Just what overall tips would you share for our student athletes that are watching? And I guess maybe Rich and Logan, would you mind starting us off? Sure, definitely. Um, one of the first tips that comes to mind is just um, come prepared, perfect uh, your resume before you go. Bring a copy with you, even though they probably already have one. Um, you know, it's nice to sometimes bring two copies, one for the interview or one for yourself. That way, uh, as you know, some, something they might ask you is to walk you through through that resume. Um, so that should include all of your work experience, plus your collegiate experience, obviously, and then your objective as well. I think um, dress the part. And, and what I mean by that is I think some good advice is to always try and dress one level above the person you think you're going to be interviewing with, right? So uh, always try to dress one level above. And I know that always goes a long way. Obviously, be punctual. Um, there's nothing worse than being late to an interview. Um, I think uh, uh, some good advice would be if you're ever going to be late to an interview, call ahead of time, apologize, and let them know you understand if they want to reschedule it. Um, I think that would go a long way um, as well. But guys, some, some something you got to think about is sometimes the person asking you the questions, they may be just as nervous as you. So I know we all get nervous going into interviews. Don't. Just go in and be yourself. Be calm, right? Have your stuff together. Go in there and answer the questions. And just remember, it's it's a conversation, guys. It's not the beginning. It's not the end. It's just the opening of an opportunity. So um, I think that's my advice. Logan, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's great advice. And Rich would uh, know because he uh, handles a lot of uh, the recruiting in, the, in this region uh, for our newer agents. Um, but the one thing I would say is past just having a resume with, accolades and accomplishments. I think it's extremely important to be able to speak to what's on your resume in terms of what you actually learned, right? Intangible skill sets that you learned from completing certain tasks or earning certain accomplishments uh, outside of just, hey, I did this or I had this class. Um, I think what makes you really marketable is being able to really explain it and walk people down the path of why that makes you a great candidate for that current position um, and really what you took from that. I think that speaks volumes more so than uh, any accomplishment or um, uh, achievement, like I said, on the resume. So um, that's really all I got, because luckily I, I am, uh, or excuse me, I am not handling a, a lot of the recruiting. I just am speaking from experience on what I found to be important. Um, I'll go ahead and jump in. So, um, and these two gentlemen hit a lot of great points on the head, but one thing Logan did say was um, that resonates well with me because I sit on the other side of the table. So, uh, in supply chain, another hat I wear is the HR hat. I do a lot of interviewing. And I, anybody who comes through my building in the exempt role will have the interview with me at the end. So the one thing I look for is having something tangible you can talk about. So one thing you got to remember is we understand that you haven't had a career. So we don't expect for you to be able to expand on a bunch of things. But the one thing we do expect, expand on what you've done. And the one thing you can always show is your leadership. So with you guys being athletes, you could talk a lot about leadership and just have something tangible and expand on it. And also be prepared. There's nothing wrong with rehearsing. I would write me out some tangible uh, examples of how I did things. Read one trick I always tell people, look at the job description and those competencies, those are probably going to be the questions. So be able to expand on those and have you a scenario 
and have your backup scenario just in case you use the other one because you might get nervous and jump the gun and like, oh, this is my good one and you use it early. So have those. Um, I know they mentioned LinkedIn. One thing to do on LinkedIn to leverage it. Um, research the interviewer. You know, type in their name and look and, and try to find a common goal, find an icebreaker, find something that you can expand on with them. That goes a long way. Um, have questions at the end. The one thing people want to know is if you're really vested in this, have you a few questions like, hey, one question I always ask is, um, what is the organizational chart? That's an easy one that you just bought some time with and you're able to really, it shows that you're vested, it shows that you care. So have about three questions. Don't ever leave an interview saying, oh, no, I don't have any questions. That's usually a turnoff. Um, send a thank you note at the end. It may sound old school, old fashioned, but hey, you're trying to get a foot in the door. So when you send that that thank you note within 24 hours hey thank you for talking to me and 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 then you can ask those things like what are next steps and so you're in the forefront of their mind sending a personalized note and um eye contact you got to exude confidence nobody wants to put somebody in a salary position or any position they're looking down they can't look them in the eye people tend to they want to see can you command a room can you garner respect so look people in the eye and another one, the last one, um, have mints because you never know. And, and it's, it's funny, but you may have just ate lunch. You never know. You may have to go in somebody's face pre-mask. So just pop them in, in just to be prepared because you never get a second chance to make that first impression. Yeah, and I think um, Charles gave some great points. Logan and Richard did too. Um, just to tag along to that, you know, I would speak from a virtual standpoint, you know, a lot of times right now with COVID, a lot of um, interviews are virtual. So, you know, when you start to do that, if somebody wants you to do virtual, um, one of the key things is just make sure you are in a um, place that is, you know, has the internet connection um, and that is strong and good to go. You know, you don't want to have any glitches or, hey, you have to reschedule because you don't, the internet's not working properly, whatever that might be. Um, you'll be on a lot of Zoom or whatever the company is using. Um, the other piece, um, uh, Charles talked about it, as far as the interview and preparation, um, just making sure you do prepare. I would have multiple examples. And like you said, like he said, it's not about the experience, um, but it's also just like personal or leadership experience that comes out. You know, it could be anything from, hey, I studied film and this is what I did. And because I did that, um, it carried over into the sport I played and I was able to conquer something or be able to, you know, run a certain way, whatever that might be, um, being able to do that. The other piece that I would just bring up is, you know, if if you haven't ever downloaded, but look at Glassdoor. Um, a lot of people do interviews. A lot of companies have interviews. And a lot of times uh, people, candidates will put their interview experience on Glassdoor. So you can look that up. And some of the key things that they do is they put their interview questions on there. Um, they say, hey, the, inter the interviewer asked me this, and this is how I answered it. You can do that to prepare and just understand, hey, a thought process of, hey, how would I answer this from a sports-related example or from a um, school-related example, whatever that might be. Those are just different things that can help you out. You know, even when I go through the recruiting process or interviewing, whatever that might be, I do that. And then it allows me to come up with multiple examples to help myself and kind of get that comfort level. So when I do speak to the interviewer and then um, the other piece is just Charles brought it up as well as just that confidence piece. I think when you go into the interview and you're confident, it carries over. It makes the room feel like, oh, okay, this person knows what he's doing. Or, hey, if you're on the video and you're just staring at them and you're talking with confidence, even if it's not the best answer, it's just like, man, this guy got the energy. He's brought, the, or she brought the energy to the table. I really enjoy speaking with this person. Hey, I think he, he or she is coachable and we can teach him to row and they can come in and gain that experience. So just little things like that that can be beneficial for your um, interview. Absolutely. And to Douglas's point, to everyone's point with interviewing, confidence is key. Um, I've always said you don't always have to feel confident to be confident. Because someone say the interviewers get nervous. <laughs> and so thank you all for sharing that advice about interview tips. 
Oh, we have a few more things here. And anyone else, if you have questions, you can now please, please chime in. But I wanted to give an opportunity for Richard Logan, um, Charles, and Douglas to share a little bit about the internships and jobs that you have available. Um, if you know of positions or internships, um, how might a student athlete apply? Um, is there a website or um, what advice would you give to them to put their best foot forward as they apply to your internships or any full-time roles that you're aware of? I'll go ahead and start us off. That's all right with you fellas. Uh, so the role that we're currently hiring for is our benefit consultant role and uh, a real brief 30,000 foot overview. Benefit consultant works with business owners in the marketplace to help them with their benefit strategy. We take a holistic approach to a company's benefits. So from top to bottom, I would tell you from their employee demographics, to the type of benefits that they offer, to the communication, education, enrollment, and implementation of those benefits. We work with the business on developing a strategy that's gonna keep them competitive in the marketplace, okay? So a big part of what we do is working with these businesses to deliver value on that end, but our end goal as an insurance company is to be able to provide our coverage to their employees. That's our distribution model through the workforce. So when we partner with the business, we then gain access to their employees and then we implement our benefits and that's how we obtain our policyholders. That's how we've been so successful in growing so rapidly and that's why we have over 50 million policyholders. The benefit consultant role is a, a fantastic outside sales B2B experience. It's not for somebody uh, who is looking for a desk job or your typical nine to five even. Um, this role provides a fast paced environment and it's always changing. So we're looking for somebody who's adaptable as well. I will tell you, it's the role that I started in. It's the same role that Logan started in. It's even the same role that our director of sales started in. Uh, and he is director of sales for a Fortune 500 company in 50 different states across the US. Um, what that tells you guys is that there's advancement opportunities in our organization. And I think that's something that everybody on this call today that's speaking to us has talked about the importance of finding advancement opportunities in the organization. Look, guys, we're all competitors here. And I think that's why we're here today as a common group of individuals is we're competitors with business experience. And I can tell you being in business is, is a little more fun when you have something to fight for and fighting for that next level, that advancement opportunity, I think is something that I love about our organization. Um, so that's that's what I'll tell you about AFLAC. We're currently hiring for that full-time position and uh, for benefit consultant interns for this summer as well. I'll jump in. Um... I'd, being honest, I do not work um, as far as on the intern side. Um, what I do focus on is mid to senior level software engineers. Uh, but what I will say is um, for anybody that's looking for internships, immediately start looking at our website. Um, we do have internship programs. Um, the other piece is to start early. Um, don't feel like, oh, I'm gonna wait to this point. We start filling interns maybe three months out. Um, so to start early, look at those internships. If there is something that you potentially might see within Amazon that you might be interested in, I mean, I'll personally, um, you, you can get with Terrence, he can send it over to me. I can try to find the person who is working on those internships just to help out. But yeah, we have um, a lot of different avenues there. Um, if you're a computer science major, you can look there. Um, if you're looking for sales types of roles, you can look within. We do have account management um, positions. And then I just, I know there's a lot more um, that I just can't think of any right now. But yes, definitely just take a look at the site um, because Amazon, as you know, is all, o all over the world. So it is something where, hey, you could potentially um, try to fit within your schedule um, and be able to do. Um, other than that, you know, I just think, you know, with internships, one thing Richard brought up was just the growth. Um, you know, this one, it does get your foot in the door and potentially, hey, allow you to work long term with that company. But I think what it also does is when you work for like a Fortune 500 company like Affleck, like Amazon, whatever it might be, um, it also looks good on the resume. So, hey, if you don't work out there, you can take it to the next position. So having that internship will only help you um, get the foot in the door, but then at the same time, hey, take your resume. And now you not only have the student athlete side, but you have that internship experience that can carry over to gaining more um, experience within your career.
All right, so um, with Coles, we have internships and we usually give it to juniors and our main uh, positions are in the supply chain, in the stores and industrial engineers. So um, we actually have a career fair with TCU tomorrow. So I don't know if it's too late for you guys to sign up. So just FYI with that. But uh, I will say about internship, it's, it's a necessary thing if you want to get ahead. It's basically like you have a leg up on the competition. And I would take advantage of it if you can, because you basically get an audition for, before anybody else. So you're getting to go to that company. You It's basically like your referral because you're working for them. They're getting to know you and you got a leg up. So you potentially can get hired before you even graduate. And the one thing I will say, it's such a relief to have a job offer before you graduate than trying to scramble after May. So just keep that in mind. And then I mean, it's like dating. So you get to see this company first with no strings attached and you, you get to know the culture. You get to know if it's a fit for you. And then you kind of get to know what a true company culture is. You know what to expect. So now if this doesn't work out, you know how to navigate that space easier and find something that may fit you a little bit better. Uh, some things that you didn't even know that were important till you start working, work-life balance, uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, just things of that nature that you can learn by interning because you're getting to learn a company in the beginning. So I would definitely, if you get the opportunity to do an internship, take advantage of it and you get paid, you can't beat that. So. So I'm gonna jump in real quick and Logan and Douglas, um, this internship word is scaring my student athletes to death, I know. Cause I know they're all thinking, I don't have time. Like I, I just don't have time. Um, so can you all speak to maybe creative ways to get some maybe internships that don't necessarily look like applied internships or ways to talk about their student athlete experience um, in lieu of an internship maybe? Yeah, that's a, a great point, Jessica. I'm glad you brought that up. I can uh, touch on that briefly. I, I wanted to make sure Rich um, mentioned, you know, what we're looking for in the current roles that are being hired for, but uh, the summer internship is one of them. And I can speak more so from the end of, I went through the internship um, and that was my biggest worry, Jessica, was that uh, I felt somehow behind as a student athlete because I said all the, the regular students, I, I don't, you know, we had other names for people that didn't have to do athletics. Um, they have the one up because they have the opportunity to do these internships, right? They don't have to be here on the weekends and they get to go home on holidays and they actually have a summer, right? So I felt as if I was in, uh, you know, such a tough place. And first off, I'll start by saying you guys are still head and heels above the average student, even if you don't get the opportunity for an internship, right? And I think it comes back to being able to speak to, again, those intangibles that you learned as a student athlete from being punctual to being coachable. Golly, I can't talk about how important that is um, to the work ethic, right? Uh, the ability to compete in the workplace, right? I think all those things, as long as you're able to speak to them, will still set you apart. Uh, however, uh, I will say the reason that I was able to do an internship is because Aflac uh, was a company that was actually willing to work around my schedule as a student athlete, which was amazing to me. Um, and out of the companies that I interviewed with, um, they were one of the very few that were able to do that with me. Um, and also they gave me real life experience. I was able to get out in the field to have these conversations with a business owner uh, to actually see these sales conversations. I wasn't just getting coffee and facts and stuff for the, the office staff, right? So uh, that made it an awesome opportunity for me. So I definitely encourage you all to check out um, internships and opportunities, but just be real with them, right? Tell them the position, what you're coming from. Hey, I feel like I'm at a disadvantage, but I want some experience because this is what my schedule looks like, right? Some companies you'd be surprised would be willing to work with you specifically just because they understand where you're coming from, that you are a student athlete and they want you to win and maybe not. But outside of that, if you're not able to get one, make sure you're able to speak to what you learned at your time as a student athlete uh, and why that's more important sometimes and even more marketable than an internship. Great advice, Logan. And and just so I'm clear as well, we're offering two opportunities. We have a full-time internship opportunity this summer, and then we also have a part-time 20-hour uh, week internship in which we can be flexible with the schedule. So, uh, you know, we realize that the schedules are tight for student athletes, so we wanted to be accommodating with that part-time internship as well, still being able to get the Fortune 500 experience. And you know, just to add to that, because I didn't do an internship, but um, there was a couple summers where I did work. Um, 
I think it is good to potentially just look for opportunities where it can, you know, just get you experience. So I worked at Lowe's um, a couple of summers just to, from a part-time standpoint in the afternoons, say like, hey, I know I lifted in the morning times, went to school throughout the day um, in the summer, and then, hey, I can go um, work like five to 10. Um, so the opportunities there, look for those. But I also go back to the networking piece. Um, you know, this is a great time for you to network and kind of say, hey, you know, I am a student athlete. I do want to continue to grow, but I also want to under, I want to understand more about your company. Is there a potential opportunity where I can intern and work around, you know, my, you know, my schedule? Um, because I, I feel like people that you network with do understand, you know, athlete schedule. At the end of the day, a lot of people don't. They don't know what you're going through. I know what you're going through. It is tough, but some people do, and they will work with you because I think if they're alumni or, hey, there's somebody who's associated with the school, they get, hey, you guys, as an athlete, you're basically working a full-time job now, so it's not something just to go work another full-time position. Hey, let's figure this out. I want to help you out so you can hit the ground running. Um, when you do finish your school. So I definitely think using that networking, um, get with Jessica, get with Terrence, if they have anybody or just in general, just if you see anybody on LinkedIn or just around friends and family, just to see if you can do something for the summer or during your off season so that you can just continue to focus on your studies and your athletics, but at the same time, gain that experience for when the real world comes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much for sharing. This has been really awesome. I wish I had this when I was in college, but I did not. <laughs> uh, went to school in East Texas. We didn't have a career center. So, hey, there you go. Am I doing what I didn't get? I'm a career advisor. I didn't get career advice. <laughs> I call that, how you can like that for full circle. <laughs> um, but before we conclude, everyone, I just want to thank you all so much. I want to be mindful of the time. I want to, um, last thing I wanted to ask is if a student athlete wanted to follow up with you, um, for additional conversations or insights. Um, for you, what would work best? Would it be a LinkedIn connection? Would it be sharing your email? Going through Jessica and myself? I just wanted to close by asking how would um, a student athlete follow up with you? What would you prefer? I'll go first. Uh, LinkedIn would probably be best for me. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I get messages all the time, but I, I do look at the messages. Yes, I might not reach back out to certain people, but if I do see, hey, you know, from this TCU or whatever it might be, definitely reach out. Um, I'll get back to you, give you any advice. I know Terrence, you actually sent me somebody not too long ago and I've set up a phone conversation, talked to him. I've recently looked at his resume. So now he's excited to start applying to positions. So I'm definitely, you know, willing to help any way I can and provide any input or insight on the market or just from a recruiting standpoint? We have a question. Um, Alyssa, feel free to unmute or share in the chat. Hi, yeah, uh, sorry for that. Uh, I just have a quick question about the resume. Um, do you have any like uh, tips uh, for designing a strong resume? Um, and also if you receive the resume, which is like two pages, uh, like uh, what's going to be the reaction? Like, I know it should be like uh, short and sweet and like you need to put like uh, the main points in your resume, but if it goes a bit over one page, um, like, is it fine? Or I still need to like work on it and like make it like one page. <laughs> in, my, in my humble opinion, Alyssa, I would say that unless you're trying to fit in two to three decades of career experience with multiple jobs, you should be at one page. Um, I think that's what we expect to see most. Um, and I think a, a good resume has at the top, uh, your personal information, your contact information. I mean, all of it, name, phone number, email, and uh, LinkedIn profile, maybe if you have it as well, um, let people know how to reach you. And then I think below that, uh, a short objective, right? Of your career objective, um, that could be, you know, one to two sentences, career experience, and then academic experience plus your athletic experience. I think your best bets to try and work with somebody to figure out how to put the highlights in there and make it kind of intriguing so that it would open up more conversation 
um, if there's more that you wish to share. Um, yeah. In your opinion, so, oh, sorry, I just want to follow up with this. Go ahead. In your opinion, is there like uh, a part which is like more important? You said like there should be like uh, pretty much my highlight. There should be like uh, my athletic experience and my job experience. Uh, is there one part more important than another in your opinion? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say there's one part more important than the other. I would say one mistake that I see pretty often is that the career objective may not necessarily necessarily apply to the career uh, that I'm interviewing them for. So I wouldn't just blanket a career objective. Um, I would try and tailor that to each company that you're interviewing with. Um, but I think Definitely at in, in your point in the career search, I think the probably the most important part is going to be your extracurriculars or your ability to take on and prove that you can take on additional responsibility outside of just work and school. That would be my suggestion. And I would add to that, um, like he said, I mean, I, I'm also, when it comes to experience, like if you were working so many years, more than a page is fine, but because you probably haven't get, uh, gotten enough experience right now, that one page will be perfectly fine. Um, the big thing there is the one thing he brought up was the tailored objective. Um, the other piece, and this is just me and being um, transparent about this, is also you can tailor your experience towards the job that you're going for. So, you know, at the end of the day, you, this could be a career move for you, a life-changing thing. So if you do have any experience, any job that you're pursuing, go look at their job duties, see what exactly you're doing. Hey, you might not have all of the job duties, but I would take some bullet points from there, some of the keywords and make sure that they are in your resume. So when people do take a look at it, it can kind of translate like, oh, this person does have some of the experience. So be able to do that. And then, hey, if you don't necessarily have, you know, industry experience, be able to tailor your projects or, hey, your um, any activities that you have done in there. I know I, I recently spoke to another group um, there was some people that was in a sorority, hey, but they were the captain or the lead or president of the sorority. Hey, they talked about the organizations that they build or, hey, the fundraising that they have accomplished that can translate over into the mar like a marketing field or communications, whatever that might be. And, and as an athlete, you do a lot of things. Hey, we give back to the community. You can talk about your giving back to the community. Or if there's opportunities where, hey, you was on the field, you was a team captain. Hey, I led groups. Um, through practice or whatever that might be, that stuff sticks out for companies and they see your leadership skills or they see your abilities that you have done on, on whatever uh, platform or sport that you play in. Those are just things that stick out. And then with that, give your accolades. If you were, you know, a uh, big, if it's big 12, right? I don't want to mess that up. But if you were part of the all big 12, put that in there. Those are things that shows, hey, this person competes, this person excels and they have done well within the sport that they play that's something else so don't be afraid to put a, um, things on there but then just make sure that it is within a page and that way you can express um, and showcase your skill sets um, to the manager or whoever's looking at the resume thank you welcome and just as a reminder to all of you terrence is available he's a master resume builder so, and he knows how to work with student athletes. That's his specific area. So he knows how to help you work to translate your skill sets into the actual objectives of jobs and, and things like that. So you can get the language correct. And also someone mentioned earlier about if you're doing a Zoom interview, make sure you have your internet and your sound. We have a room in student athlete development. There's an office. It's plugged in. So you're not on Wi-Fi, any of that. So you can come in and utilize that space and schedule it to come in and do your interviews in there. So no one bothers you. And it's a nice, clear background. Not, I'm in my home office, which I don't have a clear background, but things like that, they can matter. So you're not trying to figure out how to make sure that your, um, you know, Wi-Fi is going to connect. And to Richard's point about being late, it's similar. Like if you don't want to lose your Wi-Fi in the middle of an interview. So feel free to reach out to us if you have interviews scheduled and do practice interviews. You all are student athletes. You practice, practice, practice all the time to be good at what you do. If you want a job and you want a good job, practice interviewing. Terrence does mock interviews as well. And we're happy to do that. Him and McKenna, my graduate assistant that's working in this, she's, she's there to help as well. So let us know what we can do.
Hey, I'll give you guys a quick, fun, a few funny tips, but uh, I've interviewed people in their closet before on, on the web. Don't do that. Uh, I, I once had a, a gentleman who had roommates, so he went in his bathroom to take the interview. Don't do that. And then uh, don't ever do this. Like you guys ever do this where like you don't, you can't see yourself. You can only see the person on the screen, but then you don't have your camera set up or I've just stared at somebody's forehead before the whole time. And it's just a really strange interview when you're talking to somebody's forehead. So know how you look on camera, guys. It's important. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. And Jessica, thank you for that input. Um, the Career Center and Student Ethic Development is here to help. Resumes, mock interviews, job search, career fairs, use the resources that are at your disposal. So feel free to reach out to me or Jessica for help. Um, that's all the questions that I have, if you want. Thank you so much for your time. Um, again, thank you for joining us for our student athletes. Jessica, thank you so much. Um, I see Jeremiah Donati, our athletics director. Jeremiah, thank you so much for being here. I'm not sure if you want to have words, but you're more than welcome to. But we thank you so much for joining us, sir. I think he's dual tasking. He's at baseball and uh, yeah, there he is. He's at baseball <laughs> and uh... <laughs> good to be with you all. Thank you all for doing this. Really appreciate it. It's been fun to fun to listen in. I'm juggling a couple of things tonight, but uh, I've been paying close attention. Thanks for being on, JD. Yeah, we sure, sure do appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you all so much for your time. And um, this has been a great event. Thank you so much for, for Douglas and to um, Richard, Logan, Charles. Thank you so much for being with us in the evening time after a work day. We appreciate your willingness to give back and share. Um, it's been really informative. Hopefully, um, my athletes will take it to heart and then follow up with next steps. Reach out for those conversations and connection. Reach out to the Career Center for Help. She not the development. That's why we're here. We want to see you win in your career search, whatever that next step might be for you. So thank you all so much once again. We'll share this recording on our YouTube channel very shortly for those to watch who couldn't be with us tonight. And again, thank you all so much for your time. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You are welcome. Thanks so much for being here.